The waters of Area 7 have been jammed packed with Japanese shipping, and Gudgeon has been laying waste to all of it. One hour after sinking two 4,000 ton freighters, the boat went down to 60 feet to check our hydrophones and lay low for a little bit. Almost immediately, our sonar operator, Petty Officer 2nd Class Dorney, picked up a lone contact closing in on our position. It seemed to be a merchant ship. I ordered the boat to right our depth. We would begin to plot the contact and position ourselves for an aft torpedo attack. Twenty minutes have now passed since we established first contact with the target. Plot shows the contact is on a heading of 038 degrees at a speed of approximately 7.5 knots. In order to intercept the target, Gudgeon is moving at flank speed, making 8 knots submerged. We will be at the intercept point in 20 minutes. Air search radar has a new contact closing in fast on our position, down to 100 feet. The boat leveled out at 100 feet. It seems we were undetected. However, aircraft are a serious threat, especially in these very clear seas. Once again, we have evaded the enemy. The chase continues. Gudgeon made her way up to periscope depth to check on our prey, and it seemed the freighter had made a course change. Her course change puts her in a fantastic position for a stern torpedo with shot. The attack will soon commence. Okay, folks, we are pretty much in an attack position for this freighter. As you can see, this thing is armed to the teeth. Let's lock on it and begin the identification process here. Um, it is a merchant ship, even though, I mean, it's armed enough to probably be a warship. It's a good thing we are not slugging it out on the surface with this guy. I'm going to send two fish her way. We are lined up for a stern torpedo attack. It was fairly easy to get into position underwater, and we picked this target up almost right after uh, the sinking of the last two freighters. And I think this might be her... Let's see here. Yeah, this is definitely her Akagi Maru. 7,000 tons. Top speed is 19 knots. I am shocked she is only going 7 then. All right, let's plug that in. Um, what is the draft? 28 meters... All right, and it is a cargo ship, of course. Let's pull up all of our goodies and establish range to target real quick. Okay, set range is 2,705 yards. Speed of the target is seven knots. Mark, plug that in, turn on the position keeper. We are closing in on our, her position. We were recently reversing, now we are moving forward. Down scope. Let's man battle stations. And additionally. We are going to set this. There we go. Angle on bow set. Alright. Looks like the closure rate is starting to decrease here. As we start to move forward. And we should be ready to fire soon. We are pretty good on torpedoes. I'm going to fire tube 7 and tube 8 at this target. And we are closing nicely. Good positioning. Up scope. Lock on target. Looking pretty good. Let's open it. Let's check our torpedo settings, actually. Tube 7. 
Low speed contact pistol, two bait, low speed contact pistol, torpedo depth five feet for both fish. All right, set. Open tube seven and eight. Okay, we are now in a pretty good position to fire. We are going to fire tube seven, wait 10 seconds, and then fire tube eight. Tube seven, fire. Tube seven. All right, tube seven is away. Waiting 10 seconds. Switch to tube eight and get ready to launch this fish. In the water. Okay, fire. Tube 8 is away, down scope. And now we lay and wait. Runtime for the torpedo is two minutes and three seconds. That is two torpedo impacts, thankfully. Let's take a look at our target. Where did she go? There she is. Okay, it looks like she has developed a list to port and she is also taking water in the bow. I can't tell if she's slowing down. Her bow wake seems significantly uh, less extreme. So it's very possible she is slowing down quite a lot. I think two fish will be enough to sink this target. However, we will wait and see. We're going to drop our scope back down because I'm sure those gunners are on high alert and we are going to prepare to stock the air or stock the merchant ship. Um, let's see if she goes down. We may have to plug another fish in her. There's no way we are surfacing against this target. That is a uh, certain suicide. There are aircraft in the area. We have a zero. One of them just dropped a, there's a bomb. Oh boy, there's two zeros here. Um, I believe they're both the zeros. I'm not sure if number two is a zero, but that one certainly is. Well, in that case, we are, we are going to drop down to around 120 feet just to avoid, um, just to avoid being attacked here. And we're, pretty high up. I mean, we're only at 60 feet, and it's pretty easy to see the boat uh, when we're this close to the surface, so we're going to drop down. This target is being mighty stubborn, um, so we'll see if she, hopefully she ends up sinking here. Well, the sun has now set, and our friend here is not really moving all that much. Uh, she is pretty much just drifting along. We are going to fire a torpedo to finish her off so we can get the heck out of here. Let's go ahead and get a solution going. Let's get the target's range. Actually, it was a little inaccurate. The top of that mast, how far away are we from her? We are 1,000 yards away, and we are actually increasing the distance between us, which is fine. 
Angle on bow is actually pretty good for a Mark 14 torpedo, around 45 degrees to port, Mark. And speed, now that is the question. I think she's probably going like half a knot right now. I haven't timed that, that's just a guess. We will do a stern torpedo shot once again. Uh, we will fire tube number seven. Contact pistol, five feet. And let's get another speed or range reading. Plug that in. Where do they think she's going? This show target plot says she is going two knots, which I suppose is believable. I just don't want to miss. <laughs> um, we'll we'll go with 1.5. Let's split the difference. How about that? All right, Mark. Open tube seven. Get ready to fire. Of course, if she wasn't so heavily armed, we would engage with the deck gun, but that is not an option here. And you know what? Angle on bow is probably closer to 55 degrees, or 50 or so. The port. There we go. Let's check one more time. Say five. Okay. All right. One and a half knot. That's got to do it. Hopefully, I'm not wrong. Going off. Uh, yeah. And then. These guys don't know what they're talking about. All right, tube seven, fire. All right, down scope. A third torpedo was more than enough to finish off the crippled freighter. Once 600 pounds of torpex detonated against the hull, the freighter lit up like a tinderbox and rapidly went down to the bottom. Gudgeon continued her patrol pattern in Area 7. No additional aircraft were detected as the sun set, and no surface contacts were detected until the early hours of the 22nd. At 0420, our radar operator picked up a lone blip, bearing 328 degrees at a range of 6 miles. We would pursue. Visual contact has been established. Looks to be one lone freighter of about medium size. The decision was made to engage with guns. Battle stations. General quarters, general quarters, all hands man your battle stations, all hands man your battle stations. We are currently closing in on this Japanese freighter that we are going to engage with our deck gun. 
Um, as a matter of fact, I think we are in range now. You can see the freighter there bearing around 055 degrees. By the looks of things, she has one gun platform on the bow. I'm going to go ahead and order my deck gun crew to aim for the water line. We'll tell them to open fire here momentarily. You know what? Go ahead and begin opening fire now on the target. Let's reduce speed down to two-thirds. Once we are being shot at, we will increase speed and try to throw their gunners off. I can't make out the gun on the bow there. Hopefully it is not too large. Hopefully it's something relatively small caliber. That would be nice. Uh, of course, our damage control team is manned and ready. There we go, direct hit, holy shit, explosion right out of the gate. I am shocked to see that. And thankfully my gun crew is experienced and does a really good job here. Already two hits. Um, not necessarily hitting the water line, but you know, we're hitting the target. That's good enough for government work. And we are not being fired upon either. So let's go ahead and change course a little bit. New heading 330 degrees, please. And continue lobbing uh, rounds down range, please. Well, there we have it, folks. After a quick deck gun engagement, she is going down. That ship went down surprisingly easily, I have to admit. We were fired upon by the bow mount just a little bit, and I believe we were actually hit uh, ever so slightly. I, I didn't catch it, actually, but it did happen. Let's see damage report. Hull damage is up to 9% now, so yeah, we were hit once. They didn't fire at me really at all until the very end, though. Um, I was expecting to be under a more severe fire, but we are going to secure from battle stations. Oh, hello there. We're going to secure from battle stations and continue our patrol. Secure from battle stations. The remainder of the night was uneventful for USS Gudgeon, as was the morning. Early in the afternoon, however, air search radar picked up two contacts, barreling our way. Gudgeon quickly submerged to 100 feet, narrowly avoiding danger. We will remain here for at least an hour before popping up again to continue the hunt. Well folks, that's all I have for today. I do hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and comment, as it really does help out the channel. But until next time, this is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I will see you all on the next one.